Welcome to the video series on the Vermont Green Streets Guide, a resource for planning and building green infrastructure within our communities. In this last video for the series on the Vermont Green Streets Guide, you will hear Jim Pease lead you through Section 10, Maintaining Green Streets. Like all infrastructure, green street practices require maintenance. Integrating who, what, when, and how of maintenance into design concepts will ensure that the project reflects local capacity and resources. Matching practice selection with site-specific resource conditions will improve the likelihood of appropriate maintenance and project success. A detailed maintenance plan describes these elements and should accompany any Green Street's design. Before designing and constructing a green street or green facility, it is vital to determine the maintenance capacity of the community and identify any gaps. Confirm your maintenance needs and identify additional needed resources, including the need for long-term funding if specialized equipment is necessary or if the municipality elects to subcontract the maintenance. In the design phase, the capacity of the practice's caretaker should be considered and the final design should reflect an agreed upon method of care. For projects in a state highway right-of-way, a signed maintenance agreement between the host municipality and VTRANS is required. Also, any maintenance agreements required when the site is permitted by the state stormwater section should be included. Before any construction occurs, protect existing vegetation as well as tree trunk and tree roots. Install required erosion and sediment controls, and during construction, conduct regular inspections. Timing when a stormwater facility comes online is vital for project completion. Some facilities, like rain gardens, are required to remain offline until all construction is complete and until vegetation is established. Who does maintenance? Early in a green street's design, planners and designers should seek to be in close contact with municipal staff to best understand the resources available for long-term maintenance. Maintenance can be undertaken in three ways solely by the municipality as part of their public infrastructure, through a private-public partnership where an organization works with the municipality to take over the work, or through a publicly funded contract to a professional maintenance crew. An example of a public-private partnership is the City of Portland, Oregon. Portland has developed a stewardship program for volunteers to help maintain green streets. The City has staff that oversees the maintenance of the inf infrastructure and they provide a clear list of tasks that stewards can undertake. Decentralized green stormwater infrastructure was in part motivated by the practicality of maintenance on a smaller scale. Rather than requiring heavy equipment for the maintenance of centralized systems such as detention ponds, green infrastructure and streetscapes often can be maintained with shovels, rakes, and pruners. It is important to remember if green infrastructure will require duties that depart from current practices, staff training needs should be identified. Green Street's maintenance success is also influenced by educating surrounding residences and businesses so that they are connected to and aware of the living system in their neighborhood. For example, maintenance staff can leave door hangers for Green Street neighbors with a description of the work performed and contact information for reporting maintenance problems. What is the maintenance? A maintenance plan specific to the infrastructure on your site will ensure clarity for those administering the inspection tasks. A plan should include, for practices that utilize vegetation, regular plant management is necessary. Tasks range from regular mowing and grass swales, weed removal and bioretention cells, and pruning of trees. Vegetation requires special care and watering during establishment. Pre-treatment allows for the settling of sediment particles out of stormwater before it is routed to a vegetated practice. Catch basin sumps and four base cells are common pre-treatment mechanisms. Because they function as settling basins, practices that utilize pretreatment should have sediment regularly removed. Depending on the practice and design, this is commonly achieved either by hand with a flat shovel or with a vacuum truck. Both infiltration and filtration practices require consistent ability for water to move through the media, often called hydraulic conductivity. Removal of sediment buildup that can clog the media is necessary, usually every year. The frequency can vary depending on the characteristics of the watershed. In bioretention cells, this type of maintenance includes scraping the top layer of soil and mulch and replacement with fresh material. Practices with hard infrastructure, such as under drains or concrete inlet structures, require assessment of the integrity of the elements. 
Under drains may become clogged and require back flushing through maintenance ports at the surface of the practice. This may require pressurized hoses. Practice such as planter boxes or green gutters that rely on intact hard surfaces should be inspected for cracking or damage that may inhibit function. When do you do maintenance? Maintenance should begin immediately following installation. For vegetated systems, newly planted vegetation requires irrigation and protection from weeds. Infiltration and filtration practices can become clogged with sediment, rendering them useless if not protected during construction. Require a post-construction infiltration test by the contractor to verify the practice's integrity. The initial maintenance could be included in a contractor warranty period. Some inspection and maintenance activities are routine, like weeding and mowing. Others require a more complex schedule. Some require special knowledge and tools like infiltration testing or a catch basin vacuum. How an activity is com completed can be flexible based on local needs. For instance, if a town does not own or regularly contract the use of a vacuum truck, a shallow four bay structure should be specified during the design to allow sediment removal with a flat shovel instead. Similarly, if a town or property owner lacks the capacity or will to maintain complex flowering perennial plantings, a simple planting of clump glass, grasses or shrubs can reduce maintenance without impacting practice function. The how of maintenance should consider the capacity of the caretaker so design can reflect an agreed upon method for care. Why do maintenance? Without designing with maintenance in mind, green streets and especially green infrastructure will not look or function as expected over the long term. There are several maintenance factors to consider, especially in our unique Vermont climate, which consists of multiple freeze-thaw cycles. Include winterization as part of your green infrastructure maintenance plan. For subsurface systems, drain, clean, and seal above the frost line. Remove standing water with a vacuum cleaning device. For traffic bump-out stormwater systems, they may require installation of vertical posts to mark the border for visibility during snow plowing. Make a plowing contractor aware of all green infrastructure. Finally, avoid the storage of snow piles containing sand on or near any green infrastructure practice to avoid clogging. Thank you for watching. You have completed the video series on the Vermont Green Streets Guide. If you would like any further resources, please check out our website at the link below. Thank you.